Magavan and folks. Terribly sorry for my prolonged absence once again. Life has been quite a bit crazy given school and work and all that kind of jazz. So to make up for it, we have this integral that is brought to you by my good friend Charlie, who is also my student from Vietnam. Now, Charlie was playing around with the volume of Descartes and trying to model the area bound by the closed loop in the curve. And that's how he came up with this integral. And I think this is an absolute treat to solve. So we're interested in the integral from zero to pi over two of sine two theta over cosine three theta minus sine three theta plus three sine plus cosine theta. Okay, cool. And the cool thing is that we have cosine three theta, which can be expanded as four cosine cubed theta minus three cosine theta. And sine three theta can be expanded as three sine theta minus four sine cubed theta. And notice that we have negative sine three theta. So that's negative here, positive there. And that means we can cancel out some terms. Notice that we can get rid of this three sine theta term like this. And we also have a three cosine theta term that goes away like that. So this implies that I here is the integral from zero to pi over two of sine two theta, which can be expanded as two sine theta times cosine theta. In the denominator, the surviving terms are four cosine cubed theta minus, oh yeah, plus four sine cubed theta d theta. So we can factor out two and a quarter outside, leaving behind one half the integral from zero to pi over two of sine theta times cosine theta over cosine cubed theta plus sine cubed theta that looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, a cool thing about this integral is some symmetry. Notice that if I make the transformation from theta to the pi over two minus theta realm, we have sine of theta minus rather pi over two minus theta equal to cosine theta and cosine of pi over two minus theta equal to sine theta. And the limits are of course unbothered by this phase shift after accounting for the negative sign introduced by d theta, just switch up the limits and we're good to go. So the integral is unbothered by this transformation and that means that there is some symmetry. Specifically, there is a symmetry with respect to the vertical line through theta equals pi over four. Okay, cool. So this implies that I can be expanded as twice the integral and there's a factor of one half, so they just cancel out. From zero to pi over two times one half is pi over four, sine theta cosine theta over cosine cubed theta plus sine cubed theta d theta. And the resulting structure is pretty interesting. At first, inst at first instinct, you would probably get something like a wire stress substitution, but I have a different approach here. And it's quite similar to the approach I used back when I solved the antiderivative for the square root of tangent theta. So what we're gonna do is let u here equal sine of theta minus terribly, sorry about that, sine theta minus cosine theta. And that may seem quite random and frankly useless, but trigonometric functions are really cool. You can square them and square their sums, square their differences. You get interesting results. But anyway, this implies that du first and foremost equals cosine of theta plus the sine of theta d theta. Now I'm interested in a sine theta times cosine theta term, which is a cross term. And you can get cross terms by taking squares because you have a difference of two real numbers squared, which we can expand as sine square theta plus cosine square theta minus two sine theta cosine theta. And sine squared plus cosine squared is one anyway. So we have one minus two sine theta cosine theta and that is your u squared result. But this implies that sine theta cosine theta is equal to one minus u squared over two. 
Okay, cool. That's the first result of our transformation. But we're also interested in cosine plus sine for the differential element. And for that, look no further than the square of sine plus cosine theta. And that yields 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta, which we do have, by the way, but that is a very broken way of writing it. Apologies, it is... What time is it right now? It is 2.16 a.m. at the time of recording this video. Anyway, so we have 1 plus 1 minus u squared, which is 2 minus u squared. And now, what if I take the square root? Should I add a plus or minus sign? Well, I will not need that because theta here lies between 0 and pi over 4, and sine and cosine are both positive. So the sum is going to be positive, of course. So this implies that sine theta plus cosine theta is equal to the positive square root of 2 minus u squared. Okay, cool. So that is yet another valuable piece of information. And finally, we have cosine cube plus sine cube, which is pretty damn cool as well, because sine cube plus cosine cube theta, it's not every day that you get to use the sum of cubes or difference of cubes formulae. So this thing equals sine of theta plus cosine theta, which we do have. And then we need sine square theta minus the cross term sine theta cosine theta plus cosine square theta. And I need a little bit more writing space. Cosine square theta. So sine square and cosine square again go away to one and we have root two minus u squared. 1 minus 1 minus u squared over 2. Some simplification, of course, is in order. We have 1 half root 2 minus u squared, and it's 2 minus 1 plus u squared, which results in 1 plus u squared, of course. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral is definitely something, all right, but what are the limits? Now, as theta approaches zero, we have u approaching zero minus cosine zero, which is going to be one, so negative one. And as theta approaches pi over four, sine of pi over four is equal to cosine of pi over four, so u is going to approach zero. Finally, we have i being the integral from negative one to zero. Uh, up top, I had the cross term, so that's one, oh, one minus u squared over two. And then we have, rather I'll write it in this form, and terribly sorry about that, my OCD is kicking in. Anyway, so in the denominator we had, what exactly? Oh yeah, this cube term, or the sum of cubes term, that is. So that is 1 half times root 2 minus u squared times 1 plus u squared, and the differential element that I forgot to simplify out this, of course, gives us, in fact, I'll write it down here, and, oh, there's English in my videos now, and du here, terribly sorry about that, that was quite cursive, and du, of course, was cosine plus sine, cosine plus sine, I forgot what that was, oh yeah, mm, root 2 minus u squared d theta over there, so, oh yeah, d theta, in fact, is equal to du over root 2 minus u squared, and that should sort out the algebra. We have du over root 2 minus u squared, so the factors of 1 half cancel out, and we have integral negative 1 to 0, 1 minus u squared over the square roots cancel out, that is another great convenience, and we have 2 minus u squared down here. And now we have the integral of a nice little rational function for which we need a partial fraction decomposition, which I will not show over here. In fact, I'm just going to refer to my notes and write this thing directly. What I dream of is your eyes, and we have two-thirds, and integral negative one to zero. 
du over 1 plus u squared minus 1 third of the integral from negative 1 to 0, du over 2 minus u squared. And that is just the first iteration of partial fraction decomposition because we'll need another over here. And what's next? Oh yeah, we have this arctangent structure. So that's 2 thirds of arctangent of terribly sorry about that zero minus arctangent of negative one that is a very crooked negative sign over there minus one third of something indeed that should work out to uh -huh, definitely integral negative one to zero um root two minus u I'm going to get a plus sign, I guess. Root 2 plus u. Yes, indeed. So that should cancel out the u terms. I have 1s over here, but that will result in a 2 times root 2 factor. So I need 1 over 2 root 2 to root 2 to balance things out. Wow, English is so much harder than mathematics. Anyway, arctangent 0 is 0, and arctangent of negative 1 is a quarter of pi, so that means we have two negative signs. Arctangent of negative one is in fact negative pi over four. So the result, overall result, is pi over four because of the cancellation. Apologies for the wrong commentary over there. Anyway, so we have one over six times root two. I am not used to writing the number six, but that turns out really well for some reason. And we have, what exactly? Oh yeah, we have log of, rather this should be negative log of root 2 minus u plus logarithm of root 2 plus u. Okay, cool. Negative 1 and 0 are the limits. So that means we have some cancellation over there and we have pi over 6 minus 1 over 6 times root 2 times the logarithm of, let's see, root 2 plus u over root 2 minus u. Limits are again 0, uh, negative 1 and 0. So as u tends to 0, we will get root 2 over root 2, which is going to be log 1. And I'm just going to write that out directly as being 0, or perhaps I don't have to. You know what? That's just log 1, which is 0. We are left with negative of log, what exactly? Oh, yeah root 2 minus 1 over root 2 plus 1, which I think is quite nice, the negative signs cancelling out. And we have 1 over 6 pi minus 1 over root 2, in fact, plus 1 over root 2, log root 2 minus 1 over root 2 plus 1, a result that Wolfram Alpha agrees with. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.